Welcome back to North Mason Help Desk. I'm your host Adam Brownwell, and today we're taking a look at Readworks Digital. Before I get into this tutorial, I'd like to explain a little bit about Readworks Digital. So, what even is Readworks Digital? Readworks Digital is an online teacher resource that allows them to find various articles and excerpts related to their class, such as science, social studies, other forms of literature like poetry and then give those to their students as assignments. So this is going to be a multi-part tutorial. The first half is going to be covering the teachers, so I can show you how you find these articles, how you assign them to your students as like assignments, and then the next part is going to be how the students can log on and do the assignments, and then you know, you can review those assignments. So we'll begin with the teacher part. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our web browser. You can use Google Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, Edge, whatever it might be and type in Readworks Digital. So Readworks Digital. And it'll be probably the first thing you find. Once you're here, you can either click Teacher Login or you can just click on a teacher. They'll both take you to the same page where you create your account. And once you create an account, you'll sign in. So I'll do that right now and get back to you. And once you've created your account, you can navigate to up here and find articles. So the first thing you want to do is determine what grade you're teaching. When you sign up for an account, they'll probably ask you what grade you're teaching, but you still have to click it down here, what, what grade you're looking for for these articles. So if you're looking for first grade articles, and you can just keep clicking these first through third, just click one, two, three, and that'll only give you the first grade kind of articles. These are probably the smaller ones. If you wanted to go higher, which I assume you would, you would click 9, 10, 11 through 12, and these will find the more advanced articles and currently it's set to all topics, but you can specialize it to whatever you're doing. So if you're looking for science articles, you can just click science and it'll bring up all the science articles, starting with the most popular on down. And you'll notice that right here, it says my list. This one, it means it's already in my list, but if you were to find something you liked, you can click this my list button and that would add it to your list, which we'll get into later. So look through these articles, find something that's related to your class that you're interested in. Let's just click changes in biodiversity. That sounds interesting, right? You can look at it, be like, oh wow, that is interesting. And then you can look at the vocabulary and all the questions it has and say, oh yeah, those questions do relate to my class. I'm just gonna click my list and I'm gonna add it to my list. And once you click my list, of course, you can navigate up here to my list. This will bring up all the articles that you've added. So here you can see all the articles I have. All of these. And this is in order of how I've assigned them. The first one will be on the bottom and so, what are you going to do with these after you find them? Well, you're going to click this Assign button, and then you're going to assign these to all your students. But first, before you can assign these to your students, you have to make a class. So you're going to come over here to Class Admin, and click Create Class. Choose the grade, I like 11 through 12. Give it a class name, doesn't even matter. Like SWAT 2, and click Next, you made a class. So you can either invite them with their Google account, if you click over here, invite with Google, or you can invite with roster. This means you type in the student's name, and then you will have to send it to their email manually. This is usually the better option, because if you invite with their Google, then their username will be their, their name in the class. So we're going to click invite with roster, and we're going to type in some names. So let's type in my name, add, add the, that adds Adam to the class, and then by default, all student paths are to 1, 2, 3, 4. You're going to want to change that as soon as the student logs in, because as you'll see later, when the students log in, they'll have a list of all the student names, and they'll pick theirs and type in the password, but if everyone's password is 1234, they can log in as anyone they wanted to. So you're going to want to give each individual student their own password. But before we do that, let's just add a few more students. So let's add someone. You know, you always need someone. And then, there you go, his default password is still 1234. And then, we'll add Billy. We'll add them, and then we're going to just give them their own passwords really quickly. So we'll click reset, we'll click new password. His password is one, two, three, four, five. He's got one step ahead of everyone else. And then make him go down to one, two, three, and nine, and we'll leave someone alone. You can just keep one, two, three, four, and no one will ever know about it. All right, now that you have your students in, you're going to have to invite them. This over here is the instructions on how to do that, but assuming you do not know how to do that, you just copy this, Control-C, copy and paste, or just type it in. 
go to your email and then send it to them, that class code. And then when they come onto this website, as I'll show later, they'll click on a student and then they'll type in that class code, their password, and click their name. Well, now that you have a class, you can start making some assignments. So we come back over to the My List and we click Assign, whatever article it might be. And then we'll scroll down here and you'll have a few options. So you got the article. Obviously, you're going to want to leave this check. You don't need to think you can uncheck it. But you can, you can uncheck the vocabulary questions and the comprehension questions. You're probably going to want to leave these on. You don't need to leave the vocabulary, but the comprehension questions are the 1 through 10. They ask you if you actually read the article and make sure you actually read it. And then you can assign the class. So you choose SWAT 2 and who you're assigning it to. So the whole class is by default selected. That's the one you probably want to leave on unless you're picking favorites here. And then you can leave it alone and click assign. Or you can change the start date. So if you wanted to assign this over break, because you, you don't like your students, you'd be like, okay, the break starts then, I'm assigning it then, and seeing who checks their assignments. And then you click assign, and you can go to assignments and check out your assignment and all the students that haven't taken it yet. So you'll notice it says 0 out of 3 submitted, because there's only 3 students in the class and no one has submitted it yet. And if you do not want this assignment, you want to get rid of it, if there's an accident, you click delete. Or if the assignment is over, you're done grading them, you can get, click move to past, and then the students will see that, oh yeah, the assignment's gone. So we'll click class results, and you'll notice that no one has taken the assignment. But if they had taken an assignment, you would click grade these, and you'll be able to see what answers that each of the students give, and the... ReadWorks Digital by default, you know, it'll show the answers and give an explanation on the written answers. So we'll go back and we'll look at a few assignments that I've had other people take and see what kind of results you can get from ReadWorks Digital. So we'll see here. Oh wow, I actually got 100% and didn't even read the article. But you'll see here we have three students who took the assignment and you can see their answers. If they were wrong, they'd be red boxes. This is question one, two, three, four, etc. And then these are the written answers, which you have to grade yourself. It doesn't grade by default. So I'll click grade these, and we'll scroll back up, because I was reading it earlier, and that's why I scrolled way down there. And we'll see the first question, which amendment protects against unreasonable search and seizures? The Fourth Amendment. Cool, and then we can move on to the next one by clicking this arrow, and then Read the question, and the answer each student gives is listed right here. A, 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 next one, all the way down to the ones that we had the greater cells, which we can, that was one right there. Go back up, and we can see that Adam said Diaz did something. That's definitely either a 0.25 or incorrect. But we can see that these people, they have correct answers, so you can just click correct on those, or you can be like, oh, we'll just give them most of the credit, but there was something wrong there. They needed to cite something. I told them to cite evidence from the text, whatever it might have been. All right, so now we're going to continue correcting these. So we'll see that none of these people, except for one of them, actually gave an answer on this one. So we can be like, okay, well, incorrect. And then, oh, there's an answer there. Correct. Keep scrolling down until we get to the last question that needs to be corrected by ourselves. And we can see that this is a one sentence answer, a pretty bad answer from Adam, so we click 0.25 or incorrect entirely. But we can see this is a little bit of a better answer down here, so we can click correct. And once you are done grading your questions, you can just go back to the results in your article. So if you go back to assignments, and everything will be graded. So we'll go scroll down, and we'll click class results, and you'll see that it's been updated. So some of these, as you can see for Adam, are no, they're not all. They're no longer blue. There's a red one here for incorrect. There is a blue one here for not graded. And then there's this one for partial credit. The green ones are the ones that are correct. The blue ones are the ones ungraded. And the red ones are the ones that are incorrect. So now we're going to move on to the student portion. So if you're a student, this is where you want to jump in. Here is where you'll start. Read works digital. You type it in again. If you were here earlier, because it was the teacher portion. Go to ReadWorks Digital, and click I'm a student. And then when you're right here, you're going to type in the class code. Conveniently for me, my class code is, lo is located right here, but if it wasn't, you would go to your email, and hopefully the teacher would have sent you the class code. If not, then you can't really get in, because you don't have a class code. But here's the class that I have here. So you'll search for your name, 
There's only a few names here, so there's no real reason to search for it. But if you didn't see it for some reason, you could search for it. And then you'll type in the password that your student, your teacher gave you. Hopefully they told you what it was. If they didn't, they should do that. So type the password in, click continue, and it will log you in. And you'll see it, see it says assignments to do, and then this is the assignments I have, and we'll see a submitted assignments. And these are the assignments that I've actually submitted. So we'll go, okay, well, they gave me an assignment over break. I wonder why they did that. Click assignments to do, and we'll do this assignment as a student. We just read this, all this article, and then we come back up to questions, and then we just fill in the blank. So what are pterosaurs? What are pterosaurs? What are pterosaurs? Extinct flying reptiles, extinct dinosaurs, living descendants of dinosaurs, or flying reptiles alive today. Definitely that one right there. And you just keep on going through these until the very end. When you get to the very bottom, you're done. You can click submit. And it says you have nine unanswered questions. You can submit anyway. Or if you can click the X that was next to the box and you can fix that, whatever it might have been. Once you're done, you can return to the assignments and click Submitted Assignments so you can see your results. We'll scroll down and see that they've graded Phone Patrol. Let's see what I did. Now we have the results so you can see how well you did. It's a multiple choice. Wonderful. Written response needs grading because there was one that I, I didn't grade for Adam earlier. So you can scroll down, see all your results, see your written answers, and see if you got anything wrong. Be like, oh no, why did I get this wrong? If you had like partial credit, be like, why didn't I get the other part of the credit, and then we're like, you didn't cite something. And you can probably fix that. Your teacher will probably let you fix that, but if they wouldn't let you fix that, then I guess you're stuck with whatever answer you had. So as a student, once you are finished looking at results, you're just about done, because you've hopefully done all your assignments. You can just click log out and be on your way. So this has been my quick tutorial over ReadWorks Digital. I hope I was helpful. And if you have any more questions, you can send me an email at Brown Ada 000 at northmesaschools.org. Thank you for watching. I would also like to mention that if for whatever reason my tutorial was lacking, you can come over here to Teaching Tips, and Rebooks Digital has their own tutorials on their website. So you can go to all these through all these teaching tips and figure stuff out this way. And they also have videos. So if you go Article a Day, you'll see they have videos on how to use it, how to use the site. And they also have tutorials here, normally two for each of these, so how to create a class. They have two different tutorials on how to create a class. If you want to know how to create an assignment, there's two tutorials there. So if there's anything that my tutorial was lacking in, you can come over here and get some extra help. I hope this tutorial was helpful, all the same, and I thank you so much for watching.